September marks NICU Awareness Month. It's a chance for families and advocates to reflect on their own journeys in the neonatal intensive care unit. Nicole Christine sat down with one local mother to hear why these tiny lives have a big impact. Three-year-old Eleanor's journey to the singing, giggling little girl she is now was anything but easy. At around 18 weeks into her pregnancy, Eleanor's mom, Kelsey, was told by doctors that her baby had basically stopped growing. Tests came back normal, but doctors weren't convinced. And at that time, they kind of told us that she was almost like a ticking time bomb, that she was okay now, but the next time we came back, you know, she may not be okay. Kelsey was put on bed rest during her pregnancy due to various conditions found in the baby, and she eventually had to have an emergency C-section to deliver Eleanor after developing preeclampsia and HELP syndrome, both dangerous conditions for pregnant women. And if I didn't basically get her out, it was going to be like a life or death situation for me. Baby Eleanor was born and immediately placed in the NICU, where she was fed through a tube four times a day for over a month. And after 33 days, she was able to finally start eating on her own, and she had surpassed four pounds, which was a big deal to us. Like, every little gain, like, for her was a big deal, even if it was just a few ounces daily. But she was able to come home, I believe, just after four pounds. The journey from birth to discharge in the NICU is not only challenging for families, but for the staff working to help the babies develop. Long days caring for this baby, explaining things to mom and dads, helping them learn their baby's cues. Union Hospital, where Eleanor was born, operates a level three NICU, which is the highest level of care within an 80 mile radius, according to staff. Jennifer Hera, the nursing care manager, says the need is there for a multidisciplinary system of care. One in 10 babies are born premature in the U.S., and so having a specialty unit here that can care for those babies is important. We want to keep moms and babies and dads and families together, and so if we can keep them in the community, they can be more involved. It's less of a burden for them um, that they're close to home, and they can come and be with their baby while their baby has to be in the hospital. Kelsey's appreciation for the NICU staff turned into the founding of a Project Sweet Peas chapter in Terre Haute. The nonprofit helps provide families in the NICU with things they need. I started with Project Sweet Peas that I just wanted to be what they call like a sweet pea advocate, which de takes deliveries to like Union or your local NICU. Um, but I ended up, they had a director of volunteer outreach services position open up, so now I'm a director with it. Kelsey said volunteering and spreading awareness about the NICU can make a big difference for babies like little Eleanor. There are so many babies that are lost, um, and I think by getting the word out there and education and research opportunities that we can save even more lives than are already saved each year. Reporting in Terre Haute, I'm Nicole Christine. Oh, what a nice picture that is there. Well, for more information on how you can help Project Sweet Peas and show your support for our local NICUs, just visit mywabashvalley.com.